for many, many people um, who I've worked with over the last couple of years, they've said, well, you know, we were talking about investing in Coventry, but is it really what it's meant to be? And, and how have things changed over the last couple of months and the last couple of years? So what I've tried to do is give you a bit of a breakdown of how things have changed, how things are looking at the moment, and also some bit of interesting facts to start off with as well. So to start off, some interesting facts about Coventry itself, some quite funny ones here as well, I'm sure you'll find quite interesting. So Britain's car industry was founded by Daimler in a disused Coventry cotton mill back in 1896. The city itself was the birthplace of the jet pioneer Sir Frank Whittle and the poet Philip Larkin and pop impresario, of course, Peter Waterman. Um, the phrase sent to Coventry, which I'm sure you all know quite well, originated during the English Civil War when captured royalists were imprisoned in a heavily fortified pro-parliament city. Chuck Berry, my dingling, <laughs> uh, was actually recorded in a Coventry dance hall. A bit of an interesting fact there for you. The Italian job, if you didn't know this one, I'm sure you all remember from that famous film, they actually filmed the part with the minis in the huge sewers that were actually in Stoke Audemore back in 1968. So not quite the, uh, the glamorous Italy as they were trying to portray it was at the time. Did you know Monty Python's first ever live performance was at the Belgrade Theatre in Coventry back in 1971? And lastly, penny farthings were first turned out from 1871 onwards from the starting workforce in a factory opposite what is now known as Little Park Street Place, a police station in the city centre. So a bit of a light-hearted start there for you with regards to some interesting facts on Coventry itself. Now on to the interesting stuff with regards to stats. So this has been taken from Coventry City Council back in 2019. So the estimated population is of 366,800 and it's fast growing. Now this year will be an anomaly, so I'll be interested to see how things turn out with regards to how things have changed over the last year or so. Uh, it's a relatively young city, so as we all know with regards to purchasing of properties, that it's getting harder and harder for people to be able to purchase properties with regards to the deposit. Great help with the stamp duty set helping at the moment, but it's getting harder and harder. So there's a lot more people that are renting properties, so there's plenty of demand in the city itself. Top 10 cities in the country with job growth, patents granted, business growth over the last 10 years as well. How this year will impact upon that? We're the same as every other city, I would hope. Um, but top 10% of all UK automotive jobs are in Coventry and Warwickshire as well, with Jaguar Land Rover, as I'm sure you're aware, and also the Coventry Taxi Organisation. 9,845 active businesses in the city as well, so a very prosperous city as it is. Now, property facts. 139,520 dwellings in the city. Average house prices, now this has gone up significantly, as you'll see, I and mean, I know that Nick pointed out over the last month, but over the last three months, the prices have risen by 2.91% over the last three months in Coventry itself. And over the last 12 months, 2,305 sales in the city itself. Now, how does this factor over the last 12 months, five years and 10 years? Well, Coventry itself, as far as house prices over the last year, 0.8 of a percent, which is minimal, but it's a, it's a, it's a reduction, um, which is obviously something to take note of. But if you then look, as we all know, property investment is a long-term thing. Over the last five years, prices have increased on average by 17.43%. And as we all think to ourselves with regards to the 10-year, 37.26% over the last 10 years. And that's information that's taken off Zoopla. Uh, so really interesting, the fact that when you're buying property, it's a long-term investment. Over the last 10 years, property prices have increased by nearly 40% is obviously very, very positive for the city itself. Now, with regards to buy-to-let owners in the city, many people ask me, you know, oh, I've got one property, two properties, how, how big are the portfolios, the landlords that you've got? Now, this is information that was taken from CoventryPropertyMarket.co.uk. So probably about a quarter have got, you know, two properties, about a quarter have got one property. If between the three and five landlords, where the majority of landlords are sitting at the moment, and then as you look again there, reduces down the, the larger the portfolios, but the majority of landlords in the city itself have got three to five properties that are their buy-to-let properties. Now, with regards to the letting statistics, now this is a big question that people are asking me. Obviously, you're a big letting agent in the city, Anthony. How are things impacting upon for you? So as far as the letting statistics for 2020 so far, based upon number of lets achieved between CB1 and CB6, 2,537 lets this year, um, for ourselves, in comparison, obviously, sitting there third place, we're chasing up the, the big boys at the top there, but 128, and I'll come up to the comparison to last year in a moment. With regards to the number of lets for house shares, because a lot of people are investing in because of the cash flow rich that it gives you, there's still plenty of those that are going on in the 
whole city as well with regards to the house shares. The next big question is, okay, I'm, that's great to know, but how is this comparing to last year? Last year as an organization, top letter agree for all types of properties in HMOs, which is a real great achievement. So to give you, try and give you a true picture um, with regards to us this year, last year we did 202 lets of all types between January and August. So far this year we've done 128. So that works out about 63% of the number of lets. Now obviously do remember we had, well as well have had a quarter, <laughs> a quiet quarter, or even two months that were far reduced in comparison with lockdown. So that's the sort of impact that it's had. But as far as how things are standing at the moment, it's very near to what it was last year. But there are things you have to consider as a landlord now with regards to demand. International tenants, as far as the students are concerned, and also contractors that are coming to the city, whether it be Jaguar Land Rover, um, Seven Trent, and a number of the other big employers in the city, that's vastly reduced, if not down to zero. Video conferencing is allowing an awful lot more as far as lectures are concerned, for example, at the university, or even meetings that may be occurring in the city, or even contracts that are occurring. There is lockdown in certain areas of the UK, which means people can't travel to the city if they're studying here, for example. And in addition to that, one thing I will highlight to you, and one thing we're noticing, the properties that used to be a year or so ago, the ones that not quite so easy to shift because they weren't the most attractive of properties, they're tending to go quicker now. People are looking for all the budget properties is what we're finding. The high quality properties are still doing well, but in some cases, then people have got more negotiations on getting a better price. And one thing I will say to you, and these are the tips I'll give you, we're in a very, very unique time at the moment. The tips I will say to you now, achieve a fair price, but don't be stubborn to achieve optimum rents for yourself. Voids cost you more than getting a higher rent. That extra 20, 30, 40 pound a room may well be that you're looking for in comparison to the property being empty for a further two weeks, you've just voided the reason why you've tried, excuse me, you've tried to get that higher rent. So do bear this in mind. At the moment, you're entering in an unusual period as we are at the moment, so get your properties let if you can do. What can you do to make your property unique and more attractive? I, I see online an awful lot. People will have a bland, you know, cream-colored divan and curtains and carpet, and it's just a magnolia blitz room. It looks bland. Dress the room, make it look attractive, put extra things in there, canvases, even get a television, a free view TV. What extra can you offer which isn't a significant cost? Duvet sets, cutlery sets, all these different things you can add that actually makes you more unique in comparison. Or even a voucher to go and do their first shop at Sainsbury's. Whatever you can do to make yourself unique, do it. It's important that you try and get your properties that as best you can. And open your doors to different types of tenants. I know that we've had an awful lot of phone calls from the council now because there's an awful lot of people coming on hard times who've had jobs, perfectly good credit history, but you know they can't afford to live anywhere now and the council are having to help them to get back on their feet. In a lot of cases, as long as they've got that support there and a guarantor of some sort, whether it be through the council, whether it may well be, some of your landlords that may have, again, properties that aren't in hotspot areas, you may consider opening your doors to different types of tenants as well to get your properties let and get your rental income coming. Because the next 12 months, you need to make sure you've covered yourself as much as you possibly can be. I do hope this has been of any help for you guys. Um, think up, think up positive. There's plenty of purchases going on out there, plenty of lets. Just think ahead and be proactive.